What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com. So this week we're going to talk about some of the new features contained inside of the new version of Twinmotion, version 2022.2. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first off, my Twinmotion course is currently in early access. So um, I talked about this a couple weeks ago, but I've put together a Twinmotion course teaching you to render in Twinmotion. It's currently in early access, meaning I'm looking for feedback from new users. So um, if you do want to check it out, it's currently on discount for, I think, 11 days or something like that. Um, I will link to that in the notes down below, or you can check out the rendering essentials.com slash twin motion course for more information. All right. So in this video, what I want to do is I want to focus on the Sketchfab integration that got rolled out in the new version of twin motion. And so you can find Sketchfab's models by going over into your library and clicking on Sketchfab right here. And this is going to give you a number of different options of different kinds of models you can download. Remember that Sketchfab is just absolutely massive from a models standpoint. And so we've got a bunch of different options in here. Let's just jump into the cars and vehicles section and find something to download. And so notice how when we scroll through this, we're getting information about the different models that are in here, right? And some of these have more information than others. But basically, if you mouse over these, notice how you get information about the license over here on the right hand side. So you also get an option to actually open that model in Sketchfab itself. So if you want to do that, you can click on Sketchfab in order to see more information about this like this. Probably the biggest thing that you're going to want to pay attention to with these is the attribution. So um, a lot of these are going to require you to give attribution. You can see information about the license right here. So this one, for example, means that this is available for use, but you just need to give credit to the author of the model. So in this case, right, you just need to note that this is the Vino model from Ming Ha Lo. And so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to download this file. So you can also see information about the size of these models as well. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click the download button in order to download this file. And so this is going to download this and then I'm going to be able to drag it into my twin motion scene right here. All right. And so once that do that's done, you can take this model and you can drag it into your viewport right here. And notice how it gives you a little target showing where the object is going to be brought in. So I'm going to go ahead and let up on this and it's going to create that object complete with material maps and everything else that you need in order to have a realistic object. And so depending on the model, some of these come in at different sizes. So you might have to click on the scale button and scale it up or down like this. But once we get this model in, notice how it's actually a really detailed good looking model inside of twin motion. And so one thing that I usually do is I usually sample the material right here and make sure that I toggle things like the reflection up. So maybe we'll go over to this other side so that we can see that. And I usually crank it up pretty high so that I get reflection off of these objects. And so this model actually looks pretty good. And we can adjust the way that the lighting looks on this by adjusting our HDRI backdrop. I'm using the new backdrop HDRI feature in order to add lighting to this scene. We'll talk more about this in another video later on this week. But notice how we're getting a pretty good result in here like this. Um, one thing to note is if you do want to view the metadata for a model that you have inside of your library, right? So like this one, for example, you can actually toggle your scene outward like this. If you download this from Sketchfab over here, you can look at the metadata and you can see information on the author as well as the attribution license. So this is a really quick way to look up that information about these models. Now, a couple things about this. First off, notice how this whole thing just comes in as like a complete texture over the whole thing. What that means is that means that we don't really get a lot of control over the model, right? We can either turn reflection all the way up, all the way down like this. Well, that's problematic because some things like the seat don't necessarily need to be as reflective. Well, the other way that we can go about this is instead of downloading the model through Sketchfab here, which is a good way to do this, by the way, it's going to work for like most of the cases that you want. You can also download the models directly from Sketchfab and import them. And so like, let's say we wanted to download this generic car passenger pack. Well, if I click the download button, and download this, I'm going to be able to bring it in, right? So I'm going to bring this in, probably have to scale it down a bit. So this actually looks pretty good the way that it came in, but I can't edit each one of these cars individually as well as the materials, right? If I sample this, it's just like this big collection of materials. Again, I can turn reflections up, but I can't do anything with the individual cars. I'm just limited, right? If we bring this in through the Sketchfab download function over here. However, if we were to click on this button right here and go to open in Sketchfab, and download that directly from Sketchfab, 
And so in this case, this is the generic passenger car pack from Comrade 1280. Well, we can click on the button to download 3D model right here if you're logged in. And in this case, we want to bring this into GLTF format, right? So we're going to download GLTF like this. That's going to download that on your computer. But then we can jump back into twin motion and I'm going to go ahead and delete out this version of these cars. But we can go into the import function right here and import. You can import that GLTF file that we downloaded. We want to make sure that we select the function for keep hierarchy right here, but then we can import that. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the imported material for all of these. But if we import it that way, notice what that does is that brings in the hierarchy um, from the model itself. Well, what that means is that means that each one of these is in here as its own object. And so you can select the sedan and move it around. Now note that there are some things about that that you want to make sure that you pick up, right? You want to make sure that you pick up all the different parts and pieces. You might even think about putting those in their own collection. But what this is going to do is it's going to give you a lot more control over what you can bring in and what you can move around from the models. So a lot of the time you may want to consider importing directly from Sketchfab rather than using the download over here, just depending on what you're trying to do. The other thing about that is that's also going to give you the ability to sample different materials that are in here. Like for example, now I can sample the wheel material. I'll notice how that's in here separate from the body material. Well, that means for the body, I can add reflection, but on the wheel, I don't have to add reflection, right? These are now separate because I don't want my wheel to be shiny, but I do want the body to be shiny. So by bringing these in through the GLTF import, instead of downloading them over here, you can not only move them and edit them, but you can also adjust materials on them as well. So the Sketchfab integration is a massive improvement to the model library that we have inside of Twinmotion. So let me know how you feel about it in the comments down below. If you're interested in learning how to use Twinmotion, I will link to my course on this page. Remember that early access period is only open for um, like another 11 days or something like that. So if you're interested, make sure you come check it out. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.